Today on Filmed in Utah, I'm here on location out in Heber, Utah, talking to the cast and crew of 12 Dogs for Christmas 2. I'm here with Ken Cragen on 12 Dogs Christmas 2, and he's producing the film, and he's produced quite a few pieces in the past, and he's doing all the still photography as well. Yep, yep. <laughs> so he's a man of many hats. <laughs> yeah, and true. So Ken, talk to me a little bit about what 12 Dogs Christmas 2 is all about. Well, it really started with my seven-year-old sitting bored at a Christmas luncheon, turning the placemat over, drawing dogs, and then writing a parody of the song, The Twelve Do Days of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And she wrote The Twelve Dogs of Christmas. It was hysterical. <laughs> we took it home, we typed it up, we sent it off to a publisher. Lo and behold, 600,000 copies later, it sold. I, actually, I had a book with the same publisher and they canceled my book and gave her my advance. <laughs> and they made a smart decision. She would have outsold me about 10 to one, but it was just crazy. And the book was so successful. We then put out a line of uh, stuffed dogs and uh, we sold 400,000 of those at Walmart in two years. And then I was at a party. I took the book to a, to a party in Malibu the, by a very uh, big time producer's house. And there was a guy from Sony Pictures there and he said, you gotta make this into a film. We'll make an animated DVD, you know, direct to DVD kind of movie, and you gotta do that. And uh, so, oh, geez, I said, it's a little 24 page book with pictures, you know. He said, no, 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 you gotta do it. So we, we had a treatment written, and we went into Sony, and they loved it, and they said it's the best and everything, except that the treatment was live action, full length feature film, right? Not animated dogs, right. real dogs, and also based in the 30s. Well, they, they got ready to produce it and they decided to close that division, fired everybody. I'm out in the street with a project. I got no other studio that'll buy it. Nobody wants it at that point. And so I took a second on my house, much to my wife's chagrin, <laughs> went out and what happened was I, got, I, I sent a copy of the treatment to Keith Merrill because he had sent me a copy of his, two of his, at that time, 25 grandchildren uh, reading my daughter's book. And I sent him back the treatment. And two weeks later, in January of 2005, he sent me a full script. Two weeks after he got the treatment. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. Well, I said, hey, while we've got snow, let's go. So we went off to Bethel, Maine. We filmed the picture. We came back. Again, we couldn't get a studio to buy it. We couldn't get a network to buy it. But we went out on our own. And now we've sold 1,200,000 DVDs. We're in our seventh year. My daughter's 22 years old now. She's graduating from college. And this, this DVD is now 1,200,000. This last year, our seventh year, we did 137,000 units. Now, this was all self-distributed? Pretty much so through, uh, we sold to Walmart. We sold pretty direct to Walmart through a company called Anderson Merchandising. And then we made a deal because I needed the money to finish the picture. We made a deal uh, that went through a company called Screen Media to Universal Television, and they distributed in the non-Walmart non areas. And I mean, this year we were, here we are, seventh year. Mm -hmm. We were top 10 at, at Netflix. We sold out at Redbox. We did sixty or seventy thousand at Walmart in our seventh so, year. So Sony's kind of kicking themselves right well, now. Well, <laughs> now, no, here's the here's the wild part. Now, of course, I mean, figure out, right? Figure out now. All the studios want it, right? Of course. Okay. So now, so now, I go around and Universal wants it, and Warner's wants it, and Disney wants it. I go back to to Sony. I said, look, you guys had one shot at this. You blew it. Okay. You want to do it again? They said, sure. And we made a deal with them to distribute the DVDs. They put up half the money for the movie. Once again, I had to sort of put my house on the line. Mm -hmm. But a great friend of mine rode sort of like the knight in shining armor on a white horse to the rescue at the last minute. And we're out here in Utah making a film and having a ball and making the sequel. Keith wrote the script again. and. Uh, it's as much fun as I've ever had making a movie. This is the most relaxed I've ever been making a movie. I'm just having a ball. I love Utah. I love the people. I love. We could have used a little more snow. Right, right. It's one been one of our driest seasons, really. I know. We got, about a week ago. We started our actual principal photography about a week before you're doing this interview, and um, we went. We were sitting in the office one day late in the afternoon, and we get a call from our AD, from Marty Jellica, saying, 
I'm out in Heber, and he said it's there's nine inches of snow on the ground. We got to have a crew here first thing tomorrow morning. We got to shoot, the, we, so we get snow, and it's a Christmas movie. We got to have snow, otherwise we're gonna have to CG it, and it was gonna be expensive as all get out. So we threw everything together. We raced out here. We shot the whole day out here with snow. We it was a day before we were supposed to start principal photography, and we got enough snow that the picture now will look like Christmas. And uh, of course, here now we're back a week later, and it's you know hardly any snow anywhere. So, but, but but the timing works so that you can still get that shot, and it happened here in the state because well we have the beautiful mountains oh we have gosh, and so and helper good. kind of really help adds to the time period that you're looking for as well. Oh, Heber, pardon me, Heber really fits yeah. the time period. Well, the t yeah, the Heber creeper is perfect. I mean, it's absolutely perfect for us. And Utah in general, I mean, I, I have to tell you, the the crews here are amazing. We cast them in order to take you know advantage of the rebate that Utah gives. Uh, we cast almost exclusively here. We brought a couple of big stars, and we can talk about that. But we we cast, and I'm thrilled with the acting we're getting. I mean, just a tremendous pool of young actors and and old. We've got a few older actors that have come in with a lot of credits, and uh, I mean. The, the whole work, I, I can't possibly praise Utah enough as a place to make films. I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'll come back here time and time again. This is the place to do it. And, and before we actually have to wrap it up, because we are we have a time strength, yeah, but we're on sure. television. Yeah. Um, uh, one of our big things is we, our students are the ones who are mostly watching this film. We have lots of students watch this show. Um, what advice can you give them as a producer that they should take to heart if they want to be producing films? Find projects you're passionate about, that you care about, that you really feel so strongly about that you'll overcome all the obstacles. Uh, producing a film can be a war. It can be a lot. It, it's one crisis after another usually. Now, I happen to be on a production right now that's just an absolute pleasure to do. But I've been there when every single thing you can imagine goes wrong. And if you don't believe in the project you have, and if you don't fight your way through it, and fight your way to get the financing, and fight your way to get the pissed people involved, and fight your way to get it distributed, you're just simply not going to be successful. So you have to find something that you care enough about, you believe in enough. I heard Martin Sheen. Uh, the other day give a wonderful speech about making a commitment taking a risk and having that passion to care enough to make a difference and uh, that's the best advice i can give to any young person so you guys heard it here ken says if you want to be a producer you've got to be passionate about what you're doing so don't just go out and try and make a youtube video because you have a weekend to spare do something that you really care about and makes a difference i'm warren workman with filmed in utah thanks for watching etv channel 10.